Hello ladies and gentlemen, and welcome back to another AP World History Modern Reading, where today we are reading Chapter 4.1, Technological Innovations. And honestly, I hope all of you enjoy today's reading. So, without further ado, let's dive right into the chapter. Quote, The sailors, moreover, as they sail over the sea, when in cloudy weather, they can no longer profit by the light of the sun, or when the world is wrapped up in the darkness of the shades of night, and they are ignorant to what point of the compass their ship's course is directed. They touch the magnet with a needle, which the needle is whirled round in a circle until, when its motion ceases, a point looks direct to the north." End quote. Alexander Neckham, 1157-12-17 <clears throat> Essential Question how do cross-cultural interactions spread, technology, and facilitate changes in trade and travel from 1450 to 1750? Although land-based empires were important during this period, various inventions allowed Europeans to venture long distances on the ocean. The magnetic compass, originally created in China for fortune-telling, helped steer a ship in the right direction, as described by Alexander Neckham. The astrolabe, improved by Muslim navigators in the 12th century, let sailors find out how far north or south they were from the equator. The Caravel, a small three-masted sailing ship developed by the Portuguese in the 15th century, allowed sailors to survive storms at sea better than earlier designed ships. Cartography, or map making, and knowledge of current and wind patterns also improved navigation. Demographic pressures pushed Europeans into exploration and trade. As the population grew, not all workers in Europe could find work or even food. Not all sons of the wealthy could own land because the primogeniture laws gave all of each estates to the eldest son. To the early 17th century, religious minorities searched for a place to settle where people were tolerant of their descent. All of these groups, as well as those just longing for adventure and glory, were eager to settle in new areas. Those who left their homelands in search of work, food, land, tolerance, and adventure were part of a global shift in demographics. Developments of Transoceanic Travel and Trade Europe was never totally isolated from East and South Asia. The Indian Ocean trade routes had long brought silver, spices, and tea and silk to the Mediterranean by way of the Red Sea. Islamic traders had long known of land routes from China to the cities of Baghdad and Constantinople, from, and from there to Rome. Then in the 16th century, more and more Europeans became active in the Indian Ocean with hopes of finding wealth and new converts as their twin motives. However, Europeans faced competition from Middle Eastern traders based in kingdoms such as Uman, for example, the Portuguese set up ports in Oman, but were repeatedly challenged by attempts to remove them. The Omani-European rivalry was one reason for Christopher Columbus's search for a new route to India. The voyages by C Columbus connected people across the Atlantic Ocean. European traders became go-betweens, linking Afro Eurasia and the Americas. From the Americas, they obtained sugar, tobacco, and rum. From Africa, they obtained enslaved people. From Asia, they obtained silk, spices, and rhubarb. This extensive trade transformed Spain, Portugal, Great Britain, France, and Holland into maritime empires, ones based on sea travel. Much of this trade was carried out by men. However, in Southeast Asia, Europeans conducted most of their business with women, who traditionally handled markets and money-changing services in those cultures. Classical Islamic and Asian Technology Western European countries such as Portugal, Spain, and England were developing their naval technology. They were aware of traditions of sailing that went back to the classical Greeks, as such as using these stars to navigate. They combined this knowledge with new ideas developed by Islamic and Asian sailors and scholars, which they learned about because of the cross-cultural interactions resulting from trade networks. Al-Andalus, in what is now Spain, was a place where Islamic ideas diffused into Europe. The leading European figure in this development was Portuguese ruler Prince Henry the Navigator. While he never sailed far enough out to sea to lose sight of land, he strongly supported exploration. 
He financed expeditions along Africa's Atlantic coast and around the Cape of Good Hope. With his backing, Portugal explored African coastal communities and kingdoms before other European powers. Advances in Ideas As scholars gathered knowledge, they improved the safety of sailing on the ocean. For example, Newton's discovery of gravitation increased knowledge of the tides. As a result, sailors could reliably predict the depth of water near shore would be decreasing, thereby exposing dangerous rocks. As people kept increasingly accurate records on the direction and intensity of winds, sailors could sail with great confidence. Improvements in cartography also improved navigation. An astronomical chart is any map of the stars and galaxies. Mariners relied on this map to guide ships' direction, especially before the introduction of the compass, using the skies to help them determine their location. Ancient astronomers in Babylonia and Mesopotamia had created star charts as early as the 2nd millennium BCE. Charts by Chinese astronomers date back to the 5th century BCE. Charts were also used widely by classical Greek astronomers. Using telescopes to help create astronomical charts began in 1609, and the practice was widely used to map the stars by the end of the 17th century. Astronomers typically divided the charts into grids to help locate specific constellations and astronomical objects. Advances in Equipment Several developments in the equipment used on ships made sailing safer and faster than ever. Ships moved uh, more adroitly, aided by a new type of rudder, another idea imported from China. The astrolabe, improved by Muslim navigators in the 12th century, allowed sailors to determine how far north or south they were from the equator. The compass is the primary direction-finding device used in navigation. It works either with magnets or a gyroscope, which is a wheel or a disc mounted to spin rapidly around an axis in various directions. Other compasses determine the location of the sun or a specific star. The magnetic compass, originally invented in China, allows sailors to steer a ship in the right direction. It is the oldest and most familiar. It was discovered by mariners in both China and Europe in the 12th century. This type of compass works as Earth itself acts as an enormous bar magnet. Earth's magnetic field is almost parallel to the north-south axis of the globe, which means that freely moving magnets, such as those in a compass, take on the same orientation. The Latin sail, or a ship's sail in the shape of a triangle, was a pivotal piece of technology. Used by Arab sailors in, in the Indian Ocean, it significantly affected medieval navigation and trade. The ancient square sails that preceded the Latin allowed sailing only in a single direction and had to be used with the wind. The Latin sail, however, could catch the wind on either side of the ship, allowing it to travel in a different direction. When used with the square sail, the Latin allowed sailors to travel successfully into large bodies of water, including oceans, for the first time, thus expanding trade routes. As you can see underneath the passage I just read, on page 193, the source from Getty Images, with a picture of a boat. However, looking at the caption, Latin sails are still used on modern sailboats. Now, continuing on with the reading. New types of ships also improve trade by adjusting the ratio of length to width of a ship, adding or reducing the number of masts, and using different types of sails, builders could adapt ships to improve their efficiency. Underneath what I just read, there's also a chart with three types of ships being the title. Now, let's take a look. On the far left, we can see the ship type here, the ne right next to it towards the right, the typical length, then sails and masts, purpose, primary users, and centuries of peak use. So, let's take a look. Ship, Karak, typical length, 150 feet, sails and masts, square and latin on 3 to 4 masts, purpose, trade. Primary users, Portugal, centuries of peak use, 14th to 17th century. Ship, Caravel, typical length, 75 feet, Sails and masts, Latin sails on two or three masts. Purpose, long voyages at great speed. Primary users, Portuguese and Spanish. Centuries of peak use, 15th to 17th century. Ship, loot. Typical length, 80 feet. 
sales on mass square on two or three mass purpose trade primary users the dutch centuries of peak use 16th to 17th centuries <clears throat> long-term results the long-term results of combining navigational techniques invented in europe with those from other areas of the world was a rapid expansion of exploration and global trade about the only part of the Afro-Eurasia world not affected by the rapid increase in global trade was Polynesia, since it was far removed from trading routes. The introduction of gunpowder, another Chinese invention, aided Europeans in their conquests abroad. Soon enough, however, sea pirates also used the new technology, particularly the Dutch pirates, known as sea beggars. In North Africa, and in the trading cities along Africa's east coast, Islam spread rapidly as a result of the growth of the Abbasid Empire, centered in Baghdad and the activities of Muslim merchants. Interactions among various cultures inside and outside of Africa brought extensive trade and new technology to the continent. Navigational techniques continued to spread throughout the 17th century. Russia's Tsar Peter the Great visited Western Europe in 1697 to observe military and naval technology. His interest in European technology led him to hire technicians from Germany and elsewhere to help build Russia's military and naval power. Key Terms by Theme Economics, Europe Primogeniture Laws, Oamani, European Rivalry Technology Navigation, Cartography, Astronomical Chart Government, Europe Maritime Empires And that, ladies and gentlemen, concludes today's reading where i hope you all enjoyed the video and also coming up next is chapter 4.2 though now on to the thoughts section of the video personally some of the thoughts i have is that some of this is actually pretty pivotal to note because after all 1450 to 1750 is pretty infamous for some of its sea travel and the maritime empires a massive example of this which we'll be talked about in a later chapter on this playlist or the next one will actually be christopher columbus who, if you would like to remember what happened with him, always remember this rhyme. Let's see. Uh, all right. Christopher Col All right. 1493, Christopher Columbus. Wait. Or is Christopher Columbus sailed the ocean blue in 1943? Something like that. Wait, no, not 1943. Anyways, I'm getting that mixed up. Not the point, but basically, one of the big major points of this chapter is definitely the use of certain things like cartography this is becoming a major use and major technology it will become very important as well as it becomes a continuity for the rest of time even up to modern day people still use cartography after all and maps are pretty vital after all it is pretty fine to, it is pretty hard to find where your local mcdonald's is or where your local grocery store or something is if you don't know the area where you are or you need to know directions which is why map making is important and yes i would typically put an ad here here for a website where you could probably learn all these things like how to do your own cartography except we're not getting sponsored by anyone not the point moving on another thing to keep in mind is that christopher columbus had a great many reasons of what to do or why he wanted to find a way to India or why he wanted to go exploring which prompted him to to quote unquote find the Americas since the Americas were already existent and people just didn't really know that it was out there but what can you do with a small world or back then a big world so also another key th team was maritime empires because here maritime empires are pretty pivotal for understanding all this again Spain, Portugal, Great Britain, France, Holland, Holland, not really, doesn't matter, doesn't really talk about all that much, but Spain, Portugal, Great Britain, and France were vital to maritime empires. And here, we can also see that Great Britain, France, for example, those two are going to become a major superpower from 1450 all the way up to around 1900, because after World War I and World War II, Great Britain and France kind of declined in their superpower and in their status as superpowers because, again, Great Britain, that's where a big chunk of the Industrial Revolution was going through, through as well as France. However, that was later replaced by the U.S. and USSR, as shown with the Cold War, but more on that in a future video, in a future playlist on my channel. 
Anyways, also, again, keep in mind all these advances and ideals, and then you should be good. Anyways, I hope you all enjoyed the video, and if you did, please drop a like down below, and also, please subscribe. You can always unsubscribe if it becomes an inconvenience, and also hit the notification bell to stay up to date when I post more content. Also, I hope you enjoyed the video, and if you did, remember, stay safe, stay happy, and remember, ladies and gentlemen, to stay entertained with Chapter 4.2 coming right up on this playlist. Anyways, have a good night or good day.